Hi guys, welcome back to What Remains of Edith Finch, part three. This is officially my longest playthrough on this channel. Yay! <laughs> I'm very, very, very excited to get back into this game. Like I said in the last video, I've just been thinking about it. It's such an intriguing game. The story is so interesting and there's so many layers to it that I think we have yet to uncover. Either way, there are a few things that I want to discuss. So far, we've seen how Molly, Calvin, Sam, and someone else, Walter. We've seen how all of those people have come to the point where they passed away or the moments leading up to their death. The only one that I'm really curious about is Molly. She was the first one that we saw and I'm not, I'm still not sure if I understand what they were trying to illustrate with that cutscene when we were playing as her. It was obvious that it was definitely part of her imagination, but it still didn't explain how she died. She kept talking about how she was so hungry, her mother sent her to bed without eating. And I know there is a disorder where you Feel like you're hungry all the time and I'm wondering if maybe she had that disorder or something to that extent. Then the next one that we saw was Walter. He lived underneath the house in the basement but as soon as he decided to leave the underground bunker that he was living in he got hit by a train which kind of sucks. In the last episode I was really confused. I didn't know it was a train for some reason. I think I just kind of figured that it was some sort of being because he didn't seem to know it was a train either from what he was talking about. There is something else that I was interested in and that is Edith's brother Milton. Everywhere that we went that was kind of leading to a new section, it seemed like Milton was leaving clues or at least traces of himself. Milton drew a cat which in my eyes represents Molly and then he drew a swing which represented I literally just realized the connection there. Maybe Milton is a lot more important than we actually think. He went missing, but we don't know whether or not he actually died, even though his whole family seems to think that he is. Wow, that's crazy. I just realized that. And then last thing is that Edith is pregnant, which was a huge shock to me, although I kind of guessed it. She is actually 22 weeks pregnant, I think, which is crazy, and I'm really interested to know who the father is or if that's gonna matter whatsoever. So my guess, and if you don't wanna hear my guess because I don't know if I'm right or not, there might be spoilers, who knows, but I think in the beginning sequence when we were on that boat and we opened that book, we were actually Edith's daughter reading the book that Edith left her after she went back to the Finch home and, and looked through all of these memories and tried to figure out what happened to her family. She was probably writing it out to her daughter. I'm thinking that that might mean that Edith does not make it to the end of this story. I hope she does. That is just a hunch that I have and I'm not sure if I'm right or not, but I'm very, very curious to see if I'm right. So without further ado, let's get back into this game. Okay, so we left off where we saw how Sam died. Sam is Edith's grandfather. Got it. So I'm not sure who we're gonna see next. Can I look those people? Apparently not. All right. Just wanna make sure I didn't miss anything in his room. Kay Finch. So Kay was Sam's wife. They probably, or we don't know what happened to her yet. Here we go. Whoa meal ready to eat. This is very strange. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Yeah, this whole family has lost a lot. Are these toys? Oh. See what I mean about Milton? He kind of, I feel like he kind of lived within the walls, if that makes sense. Or maybe not, because this is a playroom in here. Okay, I'm just guessing. Gregory. Oh, Gregory was a baby. Wait, let's see. Gregory... He was only one year old. Oh, man. 
That's really sad. Uh, let's hold off on that for a second. This is a very strange room to have a baby in. Dawn Gus. I can't Gus. imagine my mom ever writing poetry and yet. I know they want to look at, they want me to look at that, but oh, Gus had a mohawk. He was really young too. Duties, Dawn, sweep, trash, Gus, mop, mow yard, Greg, be a baby. <laughs> House rules, no playing outside without permission, no answering door for strangers, no messes after dark, all chores at before dark, respect others. This is weird. How oh, Sam must have set up this area for the, for the kids. Oh, weird. So that means that Sam was able to get to their room through that little area there. Very weird. I guess we'll start with Gregory. Divorce contract. Yeah, they got divorced. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. We're playing as a team. Some things the rest of us don't. We just like taking out. I worry about a baby being too happy. <laughs> but I can feel him slipping away. Sorry, what? what, Gregory? I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. What happened? Hold on, I don't want Gregory to hear that. Oh no. I wish he could have told us about the world he saw. Sam. 
all the bad toys. That got me a little bit. Oh, oh, now that makes sense. Okay. Now we have to see how this kid dies. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Oh. That's really cool. Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. Look at that punk bracelet. With Sam getting remarried. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I now pronounce you husband and wife. Oh, there's everyone right there. Oh no! Oh, I thought they were like screaming in fear. <laughs> Can I knock this down? Maybe not. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. <laughs> Also, don't do that to your parents, kid. Oh, here we go. The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. I like this type of poetry. It makes me... It makes me... Okay. 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 Um. Rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. Um. Oh. Whoa. He gets electrocuted by the freaking kite. I'm following it right now. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, make the music louder. This is kind of cool. But also I'm scared because I know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh! Oh no. What? I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't. What? Until we found you. Oh, shit. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. I just looked up and saw that, and like, that hit me in the feels. <laughs> this is just so sad. So, looks like we have Don, Milton, and Lewis left. I'm still confused as to how Gus died. I, I, I figured he was gonna get electrocuted, but apparently that's not what happened. Here My mom go. moved up to the loft after her brothers died. Now, At the time, it was as far away as she could get. We're starting to see why her mother is so closed off. Aww. This is a really, really cute little spot. Dawn is... Look at that hair! Woo! Oh, she has a hood on! 
I thought that was her hair. I was like, those bangs. Fly to India. She wanted to travel. Sanjay. Is that how I'm, am I pronouncing that right? Oh, so Sanjay is Edith's father. Now we know who that is. Uh, I think. She really wanted to go to India to make a difference. That's really cool. Oh, we can see our hair. We got a little bun. I think I never really looked at my shadow before. Oh. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. That's sweet. And her brothers too. She probably felt very lost. Okay, I just want to slide down. Yeah. <laughs> Now I have to climb back up. She spent a summer building houses in Kolkata, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Sanjay, not Sanjay. I'm so white. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sanjay. That makes a lot more sense. Why did I think it was Sanjay? I'm like, that does not sound right. But I, I'm like, I'm going to say it anyway. <coughs> All right, my mom moved go. to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Louis was born a year later. Cool. Look at all the missing posters. When my How dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. Man, everyone in this family is just dying. Aww. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back and to see kids in the house again. What is that? <laughs> I like these little figurines. She built a little garden for everyone, although it doesn't look so good. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. Yeah, I mean, they. this is probably why the house is so big and it looks like they kind of just stacked it up because Getting more family members. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. A little classroom. So they were homeschooled. I was homeschooled. Fun fact. Edith. All of her family members. Louis rules. <laughs> oh, didn't have a desk. This is so cute, a little makeshift But it didn't classroom. last. I know it didn't last. You have to keep reminding me. Oh. Oh, look at Edith, little baby Edith. How, who was the older brother? Louis. That's so cute. Relief efforts end in disaster. Oh. Oh, that's that's how her husband died. Why does everyone gotta keep dying? I'm just sad. I'm just sad all the time. Whoa. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. Oh. But it's all locked up. I can look in. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Yeah, he loved to paint. He left all those little paintings in between those secret passageways that we keep seeing. To me, it feels like Milton is the missing piece. Like he's, he feels like he's a lot more important to the story than maybe even Edith realizes. Oh, look at us. So cute. I love our leg warmers. I wonder if you can see, you can't really see our, our baby bump. I'm not sure when that appears, but it looks like she is. She did get one. This is so cool. What is that? Music. 
<laughs> I love that drawing. Oh. Wow. So Milton is really dead, isn't he? I kept thinking maybe, he, I mean everyone said he was missing, maybe he's, maybe he's just missing, but it looks, well, see, he doesn't have a year that he died, and I don't think he has one here either. Oh, 2003. <laughs> Aww. So Edie is the one who's setting up all these little memorials. Music is so good. Milton Finch in the Magic Paintbrush. Oh, is it a flip book? <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. Wow. This had to have taken so long. <laughs> wow. What's he doing? Is he gonna do uh Yeah Wiley Coyote style? He didn't finish it, did he? That was so cool. We don't get to see how he died because... <laughs> I was four when Milton disappeared. Because we don't know. I really want to know what happened to him. I really, really want to know. He was really talented. That takes a lot of talent and a lot of patience to do something like that do those stop motion, um, not stop motion, flip book type animation style. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. That's gotta be such a, such a hard life, man. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I can look into the, into the rooms, but not out. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. I really can't say what I think is going on because I'm. I still don't know. So that that's Milton's little castle that Edie made for him. Edie must have been pretty old at that point, so. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. Why? Why? What is going on? I just want to know so bad. After he bad. graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until mom got him a job at the cannery. Oh yeah, we did hear about that in the first episode, I remember. Ooh. Lewis. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room. Oh. Except Lewis. <laughs> Looks like the man loves uh the wacky tobacky. <laughs> Can y'all tell I've never smoked weed? Oh, we can't. We can't go upstairs. <laughs> that is for sure. Wow. I would feel very unsafe if my house was built like this. But also, this is so cool. This is so cool. Yeah, my man liked to smoke. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Gee, I can't tell that he liked to smoke marijuana because uh, literally he just has pictures of it on his wall. Whoa. He was so proud of being Indian. I think for him, it was a way to be something other than just a finch. Yeah, probably. He also probably started smoking after his brother died his brother went missing. I don't want to say he died just yet, because I'm not sure. 
Louis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. <laughs> he died a lot. Same. And there's his high school diploma. Whoa, we had a big ass TV. I wonder how he died. We don't see, there's not a memorial in here. So it must be somewhere else. What is that? Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Uh -oh. Newly sober, I believe oh. Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. What? What? Okay. He kept working at the cannon. Oh my god. Could I get rid of this thing? Oh! What? What am I doing? God, these controls are ass cheeks. Let go of the- <laughs> I'm actually getting heated right now. What the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm getting so angry. Bitch. <sighs> but he withdrew part of himself. Okay. I understand now. Stop it. Chuck it. There we go. There we go. Thank you, God. In sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to wonder. What? Whoa! <laughs> oh shit. We still have some. I asked him to describe it. Cannabis in our system. He said he started small. Everyone Imagining does. a labyrinth. Oh, I thought she meant with like substance abuse. He'd feel his way about. Where am I going? Oh, not there. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. Oh. And things that have not names. Oh, this is he knew it was all in his head. Um. <laughs> Can I keep? Can I just do my job? <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize that it got cut. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. Oh man. But he found something more. Whoa, this is... I worried about him then. So cool. Daydreaming at the cannery. Where are we going next? I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Lewis like a whole new focused. Lewis. So I let him go on. Whoever's talking is this therapist. I even encouraged him. Oh. This is so cool. It seemed very promising at first. I hear doggy. He told me he'd made a new friend. And his dreams. His daydreams. Whatever's going on. Where are we going next? I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Lewis like a whole new perfect. Lewis. So I let him go on. Is she gonna give him medication? I imagine she, whoever's talking is this therapist. I even encouraged him. Oh. This is so cool. It seemed very promising at first. I hear doggy. He told me he'd made a new friend. And his dreams, his daydreams, or whatever's going on. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. <laughs> Where are we? I guess we may have to kill another fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Oh, we built the city up slowly, brick by brick. <laughs> it's taking over. Uh... 
he made musicians. Is this what it feels like to be on drugs? Because <laughs> I gotta get me for them to play. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Look at all these. He talked about starting a band. <laughs> Whoa. Looks like he already has a band. And he was always humming something. This is Every wild. day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. I don't think it is. Then one day it struck him. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. Oh. Oh. Oh, I thought I had to. Okay. He held an election for mayor. I think I know who's gonna win. And he won. Yeah. <laughs> like they begged him to stay, but his election. mind was already wandering. I'm walking through you guys. I hope you don't mind. It became a game for him. Oof. This is dangerous. It's, it's almost... You conquer a city, then immediately push on. It's almost nearly engulfed the whole screen. New Lewisville. <laughs> St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. He heard rumors of a handsome queen. Handsome queen. Oh. Whoa. Oh god, that's scary. This is psychedelic. The queen was on her own quest for sinister serpent. I like that Sinister we can serpents. I like that we can choose. The other side must be rainbow. He follows oh. the sound of her electric guitar. Oh, sitar. <laughs> yeah. Electric sitar. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. Oh, we can still trap on fish, though. But, um, let's do twice at the same time. He knew the world was all in his imagination. Hey, there's my handsome queen. Girl, come back. Where are you going? Oh, it has to But he was so proud of having created it. Here we go. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. Wow. He's someone who'd never known <laughs> success in the real world. I think it was overwhelming. And it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. More. 
My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. piercings and tattoos. I want to go back. Oh, nothing nice is gonna happen now. He began to forget the world we know. Oh, that's my locker, isn't it? Yeah. That is just I hope this isn't how real canneries operate. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. And not his magical self. Stella Snow. Rancid. Just... He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Wait, if that's Lewis, then how am I? He's not even picking up the fish anymore. What is happening? Can I go up here? Oh. I still thought I could save him. Oh, no. What is happening, dude? Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. This is not good. The palace would be packed with his companions. Oh. Hello, people without faces. Can I walk faster? There's the cannery. Including the wise calico who had insisted on advising. the king back at the star when we'd be wearing a king right now. There was only one thing left to do. Your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Holy shit. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Man. So the only two people left are Dawn and Edie. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this episode off here. This episode was by far the most intense and the most depressing to me, especially baby Gregory. Oh man, that just, that, that sucked. <laughs> Lewis was very, very sad. It seems like he was struggling with all sorts of depression and suicidal thoughts and he was kind of just escaping into the world of drugs and went a little too far and it seemed to have cost him everything. Very, very heartbreaking. Especially because you know that his brother went missing, he lost his father, and his mother was probably in a very bad mental state as well. The fact that she lost her husband so suddenly and they seemed to be very happy together. So I can't even imagine how 
Dawn must be feeling because she has lost so many people. I can definitely start to understand why she was trying to protect Edith from all of her family secrets and their legacy of dying very, very early on in life. Because of the fact that we only have Dawn and Edie left, I'm sure the next episode will be pretty short, at least shorter than the ones, uh, the last episodes. So I'm sorry about that in advance, but nevertheless, I am so excited to finish this game and see how it wraps up. It's been such a wild ride, but I'm enjoying every step of the way. I got really frustrated at that cannery part. But anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you join me for the next part. Bye-bye!